So this is my Explorer Shield for Tiny Pico and or Tiny S2. They're both compatible with this because they're the same pinout. And eventually my Tiny S3. Oh, the battery is on. There's a switch here to turn it on and off. So this is the replacement board for my original Play Shield that some of you might recognize that I designed and built as part of my Tiny Pico campaign. So this had a whole bunch of electronics underneath the screen. This was an absolute pain in the backside to build. So there's surface mount on here and there's through hole. So these pin, these headers here are through hole. The screen is through hole, the standoff, special 3D printed things on the side and all the electronics underneath. And then if something goes wrong with it or they need to be reworked, the screen's gotta be desoldered. It was quite painful. Double-sided electronics. So when I ran out of these, I decided I didn't want to make any more and I was going to do a redesign. It took a long time to do a redesign, but I finally did, and this is it. So this has got a 240 by 240 color LCD at the front. It's got 12 buttons, and they're all capacitive touch buttons. And that's running actually off a capacitive touch IC over here, which means it's not using any of the I.O. of the Tiny Pico or the Tiny S2. That frees up I.O. for other things. There's micro SD card slot, there's a mono amp on here with a magnetic buzzer, which has got some pretty good volume. There's an IMU over here, three axis IMU, stemmer connector on the side, on off switch for battery control. So if you're plugged in via USB, the switch doesn't do anything. You need to make sure that you're on if you plug it in, if you want to charge the battery. And of course, yeah, the JST connected with the battery and it's positioned in a way that you can keep the cable inside like this. Oh, there's also an ambient light sensor up top. I needed a case for this. And so I've been designing some different things, but I came up with this little guy here. And one of my aims for this was to make sure that everything fits inside, but it was as thin as possible. And I'm quite happy to have the tiny picker on the outside, but in this particular case, you need to put the case on first. And I did this because I figured that not everyone's going to want to permanently have their tiny picker or tiny S2 inside the case attach the board this way you can plug it in if you want to and remove it if you don't want to use it and so this actually works quite well I'm not screwed in right now but there is two screw holes and um, it's a really good fit and it's actually quite comfortable and it's quite thin now the only downside to this the Explorer Shield is designed to be very small right because it's for a tiny Pico or a tiny S2 it's a tiny Explorer Shield and for me, I've got very small hands, so holding this and using it is not too bad, right? It's actually quite comfortable for me. Very, very light. It just rests on my fingers. But I appreciate that not everyone has got small hands like I do. I've got little children's hands. And I'm worried that people are going to have trouble holding it and using it. They won't be able to get their thumbs far enough apart. So I am going to design a second case for this. This case I'm keeping. Um, I love it. I think it's great. But I'm going to design a second case that is bulkier for people that have got bigger hands that might find it more comfortable to hold something with a bit more bulk. So I'm going to jump into Fusion and start with this as a base and yeah, make some changes. Let's go. Okay, so here's the current design. Let's go to the front. It's the back of the case, but I'm calling that the front. And then you can see it from the side. And there's the inside. So I've got the areas for screw holes and these two little corner bits just make sure that the shield sits flat inside. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this. I'm just going to uh, copy and paste it. Turn one off and I'm going to call this uh, beefy. Case beefy. So we've got slim and beefy. So I'm going to turn this around because I want to see this face. I'm going to set up a sketch and I'm going to pick this face, which means the sketch is actually going to be using that as a working plane. So I want to put a rectangle on. I'm just going to do this by eye. Like I don't have any measurements at all for how I want to do this. I'm just going to guess, maybe make it about there. I'm going to finish the sketch. And what I want to do is extrude it out or up probably five, maybe six, six millimeters. It looks huge, but six millimeters isn't really that much. And then I want to extrude this side down. Now, I have to do this in a couple of steps because I want to extrude it down. Oop, need to make it a join. 
I got to be careful because you can see in here it's adding this section in. So I only want to extrude it as far as this is so it doesn't wreck our inside curve. Now I can select this face again and keep extruding it down and that is now, as you can see, not interfering with the inside. So now I can bring this all the way down and get it lined up with the front face like that. So we've got this big ugly box. Now we'll have to cut this back out again. So I can just extrude that through. That is the hole for the stemmer connector. So don't worry about what it looks like right now. And what I want to do is just make it look nice by filleting edges. So I'm going to use the fillet tool. And I'm going to give this pretty decent fillet. Yeah, that's okay. It just gives it a bit of a curve. So do that there. Then I'm going to give this one also a fairly decent fillet to give it a nice curve. So that's five. So we did 14, 50, and five. And now I'm going to do along here, grab these edges. And on this side, it goes all the way down. Probably want to do it here as well. And then fillet these. Now, this we won't be able to fillet these as much because it might start doing some funky things with the geometry. But it's just going to be smooth to hold. Well, maybe we can go to five. No, see, if I go too far, we get an error and it snaps it out. It looks like 5.5 .5 is the most, but I might keep it at five. And I'm going to leave this flat just for now, like sharp edged, just to match the rest of the edge. So, I mean, that looks pretty good. I don't know how comfortable it'll be to hold, but it'll have to be more comfortable for people with big hands than what the slim section is. So I'm just going to uh, save this down <laughs> before I forget. I thought I renamed this. I must have hit undo. Beefy. And I'm going to back this up by copying and pasting it again just to make sure that if I wreck it, I've got a backup. And I'm going to do a similar thing again. So I'm going to go back to this sketch. I can hit R. And as you can see here, I can, I can keep it the same. I can go down to here and it'll snap. And as I move along, you can see that it keeps me at the same height, about there. So that's our second rectangle, except we probably want it to be higher for the battery. I mean, we can do something like this. I'm going to use the, the trim and tell it to get rid of the bits we don't need. Oh, so I did it through here and it's made all these little ones. If I would have turned the 3D object off, I wouldn't have done that. Okay, so let's finish that. So we still have our shape over here. We're going to do a similar thing again. I'm going to grab this and this, and I'm going to extrude that up. And we did six before, so I'll do six again. Make sure we turn this other layer off so we only do it on one of them. And just like before, I want to extrude this down. I don't want it to go, I don't want to see it inside, which we can right now. Here we go. And now I can bring it all the way down. Cool. Turn off the sketch. So this was 14.5. And this was five. We might have to make it a bit more. I'm not sure. Might be okay. I'm worried about getting the Tiny Pico or Tiny S2 in and out, but it should be okay. And then we want to grab these like we did before. So it looks a little bit different because it goes up. And we want to fillet these. And we did it five. Okay, so now we have this. <laughs> Looks like some uh, futuristic building or something. I don't know. We have these sections here now. Now we want to push this inside over here. On this side, we, it doesn't really matter. We don't need to claim this space back. But over here, we want to claim the space back because we want to get the bigger battery in. 
So I'm just going to save this down. And I'm going to go back into this sketch. Uh, actually, no, I won't. I won't do it in the sketch. I'm going to undo that. I want to do it in a new sketch. Okay, so I'm, I'm selecting the inside face over here. And I'm going to go in the line tool. I might trace this outside roughly, just to there. It doesn't have to be an exact match of the shape. Okay, so I can now grab this section here, right? Because I've done a line and the lines join up to the edges. So it gives me this here. I can now select this as a face. I'm going to extrude it backwards. Why is it not letting me go down? Because I got too close to the edge. Did I? Right. Got too close to the edge. So I'm going to just undo, which put me back into this mode here. And I'm going to grab the line. Right, I'm going to have to make it the inside section. That's OK. You live and learn. That might do. Okay, so now I should be able to push pull this. I can, but it's just going to do an extrude anyway. I have to be careful how far I push it. We did move it up six. Six looks okay. So I'm going to cut that out. And now what I can do, just like before, is except these funky edges. <laughs> I should have just got rid of them. Probably not even needed. The battery's in the way of the speaker anyway, but as you heard, this speaker sounds perfectly fine. But I'm going to grab this and I'm going to fill it them, just like we did before. See how far it'll let me do it. Let's fill it a four. I'm not even sure if it's worth filling it. I'm just looking around at the curve, seeing how much wall thickness we've got. I'll do it. Wow, this is looking weird. So I'm not sure if this is enough space for a battery. Like if I undid the fillet, maybe what I should be doing instead is just seeing if I can just push the wall back instead. Have I gone too far? I have. I've gone too far. It's two. That's right on the corner. If I go I think 1.5. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, I went too far. But now I can fill out the corner. And now I can push this further back. So I can extrude it back. Oh, no. I can fill it at back. <laughs> I just don't even know if that's going to give us enough extra cavity for batteries. All experimental. Most of my designs are just experimental, like this. Am I going to have the same problem? Is there enough room to fill at that? Probably not. Make it negative 1.5. So I don't show a lot of my design work in video form because it's all experimental. I get to a design when I get to it just by playing. Especially if it's an organic shape like this. Okay, and lastly, we can push, we can't really push this one out much, but I can fill it it to just give us that extra space. Fill it is your friend, fill it is the best. Okay. Wow. That's pretty weird looking. Now lastly, something I want to do, I reckon it's going to look cool. So right now I've just got this fillet going around the outside edge here, which matches the shape of the board. But I want it to look a bit more sleek and futuristic-y. Let me just save this first. Is that, that's a word, by the way, futuristic-y. So I'm going to actually grab that face and delete it. Yeah. So the nice thing about the fillet tool is when you delete a bit of a fillet where there's fillets around it, it fills the rest of it back in again. So that there to me looks way better. It gives us a bit of this sharpness back in 
to all these curved edges. Compare that to that. Much nicer. Okay, so I think I'm going to print this and see what it looks like. Save. Yes. Time to print it and connect it up and see how it looks. Back soon. Okay, so here's the print directly off the printer. This is actually my third version and I'll show you why in a moment. Let me just take it off first. Ooh, nice sound. This version has been printed with, printed this way obviously, with support from the bottom, but custom support that I put in. This version here was exactly the same, was printed this way with full support from the build plate. And so it had a stack more support inside here and it was a nightmare to take out. And this version was actually printed this way, but with support on this side to see just how bad it would be. And look, you know, as you can see here, a much nicer finish on this version than on here because of the upside down print. But this version took two hours and 50 minutes to print. This one took an hour and 30 minutes to print. This one took an hour and 50 minutes to print. So this is an hour better than this one and obviously longer than this one. Let's see how easy it is to get these supports out because the last one was an absolute nightmare. Okay, well that came out mostly in one piece, which is pretty good. I'm ripping out a problem here. I didn't put enough to support that face. I think I need to dial my printer back and lower the Z height adjustment. I think it's printing too close together each layer. And this support material is definitely too hard to get off much harder than it should be but it was definitely a faster print and it's much easier to clean out than this one was so I'll keep modifying this the reason I'm doing it is obviously if I'm going to supply these to customers if they order cases with their Explorer shields I want them to be as quick as possible for me to print so I can offer them as cheap as possible okay well I'm not going to continue cleaning this one because I did wreck the inside just here. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap. But the outside result is the same as this one. So we're going to go with this one. <laughs> okay, so how does it fit and feel? Well, I'm going to put the battery in and click it in. And wow, okay, nice fit. Fits really well. Let me just grab a tiny Pico. That fits really well. Really happy with that. So I have been told by someone who printed one of these ones that I forgot to leave room for one pin on the Tiny S2. I did extend this section higher to allow for the extra pins. I thought I did, but I only allowed for an extra one pin on each side. The Tiny S2 has got two pins on this side, so I will have to make a slight modification to this. But yeah, this works really well, and that's actually quite comfortable even for me, with little hands. So yeah, it rests really nicely here. And that's actually, I've got to say, I might even like it more than this one. I mean, I've got small hands, I don't mind that. But this, this feels quite nice. It is bulkier, so it is thicker, as you can see. And it's got this bulk on the side, but the curve is quite nice. I'm actually really happy with that. So, the Explorer Shield is available on my store right now. You can order them. I'll put a link in the description below. The cases I will make available once I've modified the back here for the Tiny S2. I'll make the STLs available on GitHub for this version and this version, so you can print your own if you want to. And I will, uh, as soon as I've worked all this out and worked the best way to print it, make these available on my store as well that you can order as an extra with your Explorer Shield if you don't have a 3D printer or you don't want to print one out, I'll be able to do that for you. But yeah, that came out really well. I'm really happy with that. Better than I expected it to be. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little look into how my brain works when I'm designing 3D stuff. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye.